Thank you, Tara. I have I sit down, so I hope this thing works for you. What I'm going to tell you about for the next 50 minutes or so is how Ford Mora is attempting to become more sustainable. And in particular, just I only have 50 minutes, so I'll just introduce the sort of things we're currently working on um, and to say we're open for business at the very outset. Anybody who hasn't heard me before, I have to brace my teeth, so if you can't understand what I'm saying, please ask and I'll explain and I'll repeat it again. So, my talk is building a market-led innovation approach, and you've probably heard it this morning from quite a few people. Um, innovation in a commercial organization has to be market-led, uh, at least market-aware, or else it won't go anywhere. Um, so the first thing I want to say is, if I had a pound for every time somebody said to me, or a euro, um, that when the next big idea coming, then I'd be a wealthy man. Uh, innovation is more than just a big idea. You can get to the same place you want to get to by a whole sequence of baby steps. So it's not all about the iPod moment breakthrough innovation. So what I'm going to talk to you about is what's market-led innovation. Uh, market-led innovation in Board Mora, how we do it. Examples of, of uh, innovation in Board Mora and some concluding remarks. And I will do that in 50 minutes. Um, first thing, not quite the general public here, but if we ask the general public outside, and over the last eight years we've been at this, so we kind of feel that if I was to do a box pop outside and ask about innovation, to say it has something to do with space rockets, it's something to do with. Uh, uh, social media, uh, Twitter and so on. Something that has been complicated. It has to do with Einstein. Um, some people would mention Kodak and Apple as opposite ends of the spectrum in how to innovate. And most people would say it's very new, has been new. But nobody would say innovation is a harnessing of ideas for the commercial benefits of a business. I think it's important that we ground innovation and take away the complexity that exists around us. Um, so within the board model context, what do we feel market-led innovation is? Market-led innovation is, I repeat, harnessing of ideas for the commercial benefit of business. Such ideas range from large continuous improvement ideas to cost-saving ideas right through to breakthrough radical approaches. And in, in all events, the overarching aim of innovation is to bring value and future growth and profitability to an enterprise. But I just make the point that there are multiple, multiple types of innovation, strategic innovation, uh, IBM, I don't know if they're here today, but they're a good example of somebody who changed their strategy midstream um, and innovation brought them to re realize that there wasn't a future in the hardware market. So they're now uh, very squarely solutions providers. Governmental innovation doesn't rub run off the tip of the tongue, but New Zealand are a good example of a country that um, took on board and uh, sponsored the growth of innovation in their country, and they've made uh, pretty remarkable uh, movements up the, the, um, the, the, the various um, evaluation media um, publications that come out. Building business model innovation, like it or not, I think the Ryanair and uh, uh, O'Leary uh, uh, are an example of good innovation, business model innovators. He flies the same place as everybody else, but his business model is different and that makes him successful. And I don't know if anybody is here from the Kerry Group, but they're a good example of customer-led innovation. Um, their innovation agenda is largely led by the people who make the primary three fingers or chicken nuggets or whatever they, the food ingredients that they supply. And then there's technology innovation. But I think my point here is that 
when we hear about innovation, we all dwell on um, technology innovation. And an example on that, uh, what's my time? Uh, the, the, in the mid 1800s, what we, a company we all know and love, um, Nokia were established and at the time they were miles away from mobile phones, they were actually a, a paper poke manufacturing company. But by the 1970s, through innovation and a whole series of iterations, they became the world leader in uh, mobile phones, uh, believe it or not, that is a mobile phone. Um, so by the year 2000, they were looking back and uh, pictures were being uh, passed around to show how much technology had uh, managed to progress mobile phone technology over the last uh, previous 20 odd years, uh, 30 odd years. But um, they were still focused on technology innovation. And then they, they reached the peak of their lifetime around about 2013 when uh, they introduced the Lum Lumia range, which is still well uh, accepted as being one of the, the best uh, range of smartphones on the market. They also had a brand which was uh, almost a, a, a household name. Well, by 2015, does anybody know where Nokia were? Nokia have now been uh, taken over by Microsoft. So if you have a Nokia phone, look after it. It's probably worth money. Uh, Nokia no more. So I'm making the point, they are very good at technology, but they probably focus a little bit too much on technology innovation. So technology isn't the only thing innovation has to do with. So within Border Motor, what do we do? Well, we're uh, we, we have the drum beat that if you can't explain simply you probably don't understand it well enough. So our core approach is a repeat of the fact that innovation is something grounded and market led. And we have three main uh, areas. We focus on decentralizing innovation. That's get the innovators as close as possible to market and to the customers. We operate an open innovation, i.e. a collaboration model. That means that we're quite happy to share um, and expand our so-called eco ecosystem of innovation. And we also do innovation in the horizons. Uh, the last one is very important. If you look at the graph of profitability or market growth over time, uh, horizon one is what we do today. So we're making a move away from being a peak company, but we're still primarily peak company. So. Horizon One Innovation is doing what you do now to be better than your competitors. Horizon Two is the so-called semi-radical innovation. It's what comes next. And Horizon Three is the blue sky stuff. So in that, we divide our thinking on innovation into Horizon One, the immediate, Horizon Two, immediate future, and Horizon Three, the absolute future. Um, but too many people, too many uh, companies focus primarily on Horizon 3 and forget about their knitting. Um, we say, and I should emphasize here that I'm not saying it's the right way of doing it, this is just our way of doing it. We say that there are four main components to innovation. One is you need somebody who has a vision, uh, and that really has to come from the very top of the organization. Then the people in on board to do the innovation need to be number three, very committed. And uh, we say only then do you develop a process. If I was to pick one of those, I'd say the people, the people involved in innovation are very important, and therefore um, we would certainly argue that um, conferences like today are very good. Um, we think summarizing it all is just come across this quite recently. I think that summarizes why people are important. Uh, it says if you want to go fast, go alone, but if you want to go far, you need a team. So we uh, developed a team, and to give an example of some things we're working on, uh, Border Runner in 1948 was primarily a peace company. 
and for those of you who think that we're a rural company, that is actually the middle of Dublin. It's uh, Phoenix Park in Dublin. Um, so at the time, post-war period, we were producing uh, fuel peat and energy peat and stacking it high in Dublin. But times have changed and we've had to morph and move on. So today we are involved in, uh, dare I say, wind farming. Um, the previous speaker talked about that. Yes, we're involved in wind farming. Um, we're involved in, in uh, biomass uh, growth and burning in the peak station. We're involved in ambient fuels. And the bottom right there, the middle right, the guy, is the boys with bin. We own a company called AES that collects waste. We don't call waste waste, we call it the resource because the more things we can get out of it, uh, the more profitable it is. Um, bottom left, we're also involved in ecotourism. And bottom right, we're looking at more novel and sustainable ways of generating uh, growing compost. In a little bit more detail, uh, we're involved in renewable energy, wind farms, solar farms, uh, biomass, and CHP. CHP is combined heat and power. Um, we have uh, a separate section deal with that currently, and about 40 people currently employ that. We have the home heat news section, um, where our focus is on ambiance fuels. Ambiance fuels are fuels that create the fire effect, but wouldn't be the primary uh, uh, production of heat anymore. Um, with the price of oil, that's becoming increasingly more popular. Uh, we're talking about making the biomass uh, briquette. That is the old and well-loved briquette made into a more sustainable, low-carbon biomass peat hybrid. Uh, we're talking about uh, building a smokeless coal and we're developing uh, a bio coal, which is a, a, a pulverized coal and biomass hybrid. On the land and property side, uh, we have plenty of land. Uh, we own about 1.5% of the surface of the land in Ireland. Uh, we want to use that responsibly and we've been looking at things like ecotourism, uh, creating carbon sources to carbon sinks and believe it or not, growing fish uh, on the cutaway boards through agriculture. Um, we also said own the AES company where we're looking at things in the, the near term innovation horizon one, uh, putting chips on beams, route optimization, horizon two, surge management and anything called MBT, which is mechanical biological treatment, and horizon three gasification process okay. Some concluding remarks. Um, you, you know, I decided to do something about this because I felt that the whole area was being, being uh, overly complicated and this is the party political broadcast. I wrote uh, a book on it um, and these are, you've probably heard the, the term written on my tombstone, these are the basic things I say about innovation. Innovation is something for us all, it's very simple and something that really has to be market driven. Uh, ideas for innovation can range from the small to the very large breakthrough and everything in between. And throughout these ideas, the basic aim of innovation is to add growth, profitability and opportunity to the people who do it. Um, I, I would argue that if you manage it, you do it better. Uh, Nobody is saying that the projects that make up an innovation program are simple, but the process by which they're managed should be simple. Um, innovation is not the remission of white coat people alone. And we're all in innovating all of the time, but we don't call it that. And I hope they're not here to sue me, but it's not just the, the Googles or the Facebooks or the big uh, companies that innovate, we should all be innovating. And probably I'll finish on by saying collaboration is key. Collaboration and competence like this are very important. So 
innovation in our approach to it is very simple and grounded. Um, and I'll finish by putting up this. If those guys had listened maybe to uh, the guy without being too busy and too focused on all of the things, maybe their lives would be an awful lot easier. So thanks for your attention. Thank you.